the caribou hunt is over, and it's time to go back to the lodge. Friday, we're at lunch. But they won't be walking or driving. These men are on a hunting vacation on the remote tundra of northern Alaska. The only way out of here is by plane. But first, it has to land, successfully. Oh! The plane clips a treetop. Oh! But the damage isn't serious. Oh! Did it really? Yeah, sure did. The pilot finally makes the landing and loads the hunters on board. But the winds are high and the plane is too low. And this time, the trees are going to hit a lot harder. Crashed on takeoff in the middle of nowhere, with friends waiting on the other end, hoping against hope. When I'd heard the plane was wrecked, uh, my stomach just dropped to my feet. And a recovered home video surviving to tell the tale. This is oh. Oh. Up next, the plane's a wreck. Oh my God! And so are friends and family. When you hear about a crash in the tundra, you never think that anybody's going to survive. Then, no brakes and no way out. No doubt about it, you mind? These are dead people. Plus, over the edge and sucked under. Next on When Vacations Attack. Jeff Layton is a sheriff's deputy from Iowa. On a five-day caribou hunt in the Alaskan wilderness, 120 miles northwest of Anchorage, with his friends. What's unique about hunting in Alaska is um, you're hunting by yourself. There's no one else around. It's very peaceful. There are no roads, and it's 60 miles to the nearest town of Antioch, with only one way in and one way out, by plane. On day five, they are ready to go home, if the pilot can land in the treacherous winds blowing around their camp. No luck on his first attempt. And the second is even scarier. Oh! Yeah, really? Yeah, sure. The plane hits a tree. But this time, it actually does make it down and the pilot says it's still okay to fly. It put a little dent on his wing. I questioned him a little bit about it, and he, you know, he, he didn't seem to be any problem at all. It was just a little dent and something to be pounded out. Despite the dent, Jeff takes off first with a load of caribou meat. Because of the extra caribou cargo, the others have to wait for the next flight. The plane will return to pick up the next two hunters in about an hour. I didn't have any qualms at all about getting on the, on the plane. He made me feel right at ease after getting in with him and get my gear loaded. The plane returns with just the pilot on board. But once again, there's trouble on the landing. As Shep Brown, one of Jeff's hunting buddies, rolls tape on a video camera found later at the scene. Son of a major. Whoa, where the hell's he going? Ooh, but these hunters know what they've signed up for. It's Alaska, and flying can be rough. Shep and Jim Reimer climb on the plane and put their trust in the pilot. Shep has his camera pointed out the window during takeoff. The plane reaches 80 miles an hour, but it's barely off the ground. And headed straight for the trees. It happens in an instant, as the right wing clips the treetops, sending the plane cartwheeling through the forest, with Shep's camera rolling the whole time. 60 miles away, Jeff gets the news, as he anxiously awaits the arrival of his friends in Antioch. What was going through my mind from the moment I heard about the plane wreck was my friends were up there on the mountain. I had no idea what was going on. It was very helpless feeling. That that I didn't like at all. 
the prospects do not look good. There have been five plane accidents in this part of Alaska in the last week, all of them involving a fatality. When you hear about a crash in the tundra, you never think that anybody's gonna survive. Most of the time, you know, you, you hear of plane crashes and of course there's fatalities involved. Rescue teams finally arrive at the crash site. What they find is a barely recognizable plane. Upside down, wings torn off, nearly crushed beyond recognition. And they find something else too. All three passengers, the pilot, Shep Brown, and Jim Reimer, alive, on their feet, and unscathed. Jim Reimer recalls every moment of the crash. As we started to go down, I remember somebody screaming, and I think it was me. <laughs> then we started to cartwheel as we crashed, and everything turned into slow motion. I was thinking to myself, when is this going to stop? I actually started to have my life flash before my eyes. Uh, I had the video going, but I think I had my finger over the lens part of the time. We were scared. We were scared. We didn't think we were going to make it. A roll bar built into the cabin prevented the passengers from being crushed. They released themselves upside down from their seat belts and crawled out of the wreckage. Son of a bitch. Chef? Yeah. You OK? Yeah. Finally, when we came a little bit to our senses, we just couldn't believe that we had survived such a horrific crash. They are fortunate to be home from the hunt. This is where camp was. But Alaska still beckons, and they still answer to the call of the wild, even if it means getting back in a small plane and hoping for the best. It was uh, two years after our uh, plane crash that I booked uh, another hunt with the same pilot, but his wife would only let him use float planes. We had to land on water. 